Welcome to the podcast for Refuge City Church. We hope that the message today blesses you and inspires you to be a refuge that embraces others. I want to start out kind of in an awkward way. And I want to start off thinking and, and having us think about when was the last time that one of you or someone said to you, Happy New Year? Like, it seems like, what, are we almost in the fifth month now, month now, right? And it seems like at the beginning of the year, everybody was so excited about a new year happening and the ability to make changes and to do all of these things that we can do because that's what a new year affords us of, right? And then it seems like a month went by and it's just the same old thing. But I'm here to tell you that we are still in a new year, amen? We can still make the changes that we want to make in our lives because that's what a new year offers us, amen? And if we get out of the heart that we are in a new year, then maybe some of those things that we would like to change will just have to wait until next year, amen? No, right? This is a happy new year, amen? And I want to encourage you to walk in this year as a new year. Amen. All of those things that was done in the past, they're behind us. And behold, we are a new creation in Christ Jesus every day. Amen. 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 So happy new year. Thank you. Today is such an awesome day at Refuge Church. Because as Pastor Jimmy mentioned, all of the pastors from the different campuses get to do this campus swap. And and it's really awesome because at the different campuses, we get to know the people and we get to know the pastors of different campuses. Amen. And it's just, it's amazing for us as pastors to see different people. And even though we're one church, there's, there's differences that we have, right? There's differences that we have, but we are all the same in Christ. Amen. We're brothers and sisters and it's encouraging. Before I begin, can I just say what an amazing team of pastors, leaders, and volunteers that you have here at Refuge City Church. Amen. Man, you guys are awesome. And Pastor Jim is an amazing man of God. And I am so grateful for his leadership and his guidance in my life and in the vision that he has for RCC to be a refuge embracing people. Amen. There are so many people in the world today who have no idea what the inside of a church looks like. And I'm surprised by how many people I I run into that say they have never been in a church. But I believe Refuge Church is leading people not only to just go to church, but to be the church. Amen. More and more people are coming to Christ Jesus today than any other time in history because of people like you. Amen. We are being the church wherever we go. Can we just, can we just praise God for that? Just for a moment. He is good. Amen. Before I, before I continue, I just want to, I just want to pray. Would you join me? Heavenly father, I just thank you and praise you for the privilege and the opportunity to stand here. Father, I pray that I would decrease And Lord, that you, you would increase. And God, that that each and every person that's here today or that's watching online would hear your word, not mine. God, that you would bless them in a mighty way today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow. I don't know why I get really nervous when I come here. But you know, I get nervous wherever I, even in Milan, I get nervous there too. So when I was asked to preach here 
this morning I began, I began praying and I began seeking Holy Spirit as to what he wanted me to preach on. And as I prayed about all the different possibilities, you know, when, when you're asked to preach, Mark, you know, that you have all these things that, that you think God wants to say. And, and, then, and then it just settles. And I really felt like Holy Spirit simply said one thing. God bless you. He simply just said, preach the way you preach in Malin. Amen. One of those things that I've noticed about God's word is that it doesn't matter where you go in the world. God's word is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Amen. It's always the same. And the same is true about where God's word is being preached. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're in Africa or it doesn't matter if you're in Klamath Falls or if you're in Malin or the Philippines. God's word is the same wherever you are. Amen. That's awesome. That's really, that's really cool. So if it's okay with you, can I just preach what God put on my heart in Malin? Okay. Awesome. Okay, in Malin, we have a verse of the year that we all read together. And I want to share that with you this morning. The verse is from Isaiah 41.10. And let's read it together. It should be on the screen. No? Okay, it's not going to be on the screen. <laughs> Trust me, it's the word of God. Okay? It says this. It says, fear not. For I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Man, you think about that. What do you think his righteous right hand is? Jesus, right? Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, and he's upholding us. Amen? That's so awesome. Now, I read this in a couple different versions and I want to share this next one with you because it just really identifies with me as far as the way it's articulated. Listen to this in the midst of the trials and the tribulations that we go through in life, right? This is the, this is why we, we have a verse of the year so that we can recall these verses when we need them. Right? So listen to this verse out of the message translation. Same one. Isaiah 41 10 says this, don't panic. I am with you. There's no need to fear for I am your God. I will give you strength. I will help you. I will hold you steady and I will keep a firm grip on you. Amen. And I'm like, thank you, Lord, because sometimes I need someone to keep a firm grip on me. Amen. (laughs) I'm serious. That's so awesome. It's so awesome that in the world we live in, No matter what's going on, no matter what's going to happen, we don't have to fear because God promises us that he is with us and he will strengthen us and he will keep a firm grip on us. Amen. Isn't that powerful? Man. So I wonder this morning, those of you who are here or if you're online watching today, Do you believe that the scripture, and let me just say this, all scripture is the divine inspired word of God? Do you believe that this morning? Amen. So I believe that when Solomon, right, who was the wisest man gifted by God, right? When he wrote in Ecclesiastes 3 that there is a time and a season and a purpose for everything under heaven, there's two things that apply. First, God inspired 36 authors to write 66 books over a period of 1,500 years. Amen? Amen. Okay, and second, we should pay attention. Right? We should pay attention. For the past several weeks in Malin, we have been in the book of John. As we follow along in scripture, the events that first happened 2,000 years ago. 
but during the same time or the same season that we're in right now. And I believe the time and the season that we are in right now is so incredibly important. And we can't forget about it. I want to review with you some of these things that, that we're experiencing that happened 2,000 years ago, right? And it starts in, in chapter 17 of John. Jesus was in the garden praying for first himself. Then he began to pray for the disciples. Then for the next 16 verses, he prayed a powerful prayer for all those who would believe in him through the efforts of the 12 apostles. That's you. 16, chap 16 verses praying for you and for me. Amen. Isn't that incredible? That God would spend so much time in prayer on our behalf? In chapter 18 of John, while Jesus was praying with the disciples, Jesus was arrested. He was questioned by the high priests and taken before Pontius Pilate. And in chapter 19, Jesus was delivered to be crucified. He hung on a cross and died, and he was buried, sealed in a tomb. In chapter 20, Resurrection Sunday, right? Jesus rose from the grave, and the tomb was found to be empty. Amen? Yeah. Woohoo! Now that just happened, right? That just happened, what, four weeks ago? This is the time and the season that we're in right now. And we know from the book of Acts chapter one, verses one through five, that Jesus tells his disciples something very important. He says this, in my former book, Theopolis, now let me, let me stop there for a second. Do you know what Theopolis means? What? Lover of God. So some people think that he's talking to an actual person named Theolopolis, but other people believe that he's talking to us who love God. I'm kind of that one. I like to believe that God's talking to us right now. Amen. So he says in my former book, Pastor Rick, I wrote about all the things that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, listen to this. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. And on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this commandment. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father that my father promised, which you have heard me speak about for John baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus continues in verse eight. And he says this, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Then the disciples watched Jesus ascend into heaven. Wow. And in chapter two of, of Acts verses one through four, it says this. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterances. Amen? Man, I love God's word. Man, this is so encouraging for me. So, so we see from scripture that over the past few weeks, we have been in a season that revolves around the death, 
burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And in the coming weeks, we will be in the season of the ascension of Jesus and the impartation of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Wow. Now, do you guys realize that we are smack dab in the middle of all that Jesus began, but also finished on the cross? We're in the middle of that right now. How exciting is that? Come on, you guys should be excited about this. And the power of his blood shed would continue into the future for all time and for all people. Think about, think about this for a second. The season it's slow. I, I'm, I'm catching glimpses of people that I recognize, and I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> Think about the season we, the church, are in right now. According to scripture, Jesus died, was buried, and rose from the grave on Resurrection Sunday that we just celebrated just a little bit over four weeks ago. We just celebrated that. And in just under four weeks from today, it will be Pentecost Sunday. Woohoo! Come on, Pentecost Sunday. It's amazing, okay? Some people in the church may look at these two events as just a day or an event, like a birthday or an anniversary where you wait for that day to arrive. And when that day finally comes, you celebrate it and you receive presents and you have a cake. And then at the end of the day, it's over. It's over. And the next day comes and it's back to the same old thing. And the day that you waited for, for so long is done and gone. Church, can I tell you something today? That's not how the kingdom of God works, amen? That's not how my God works. Jesus, what Jesus did on the cross is just as powerful today as it was the day that it happened, amen? The resurrection of Jesus was the same power that raised him from the grave is the same power that's in us today, amen? And it will always be the same power. Amen. It never loses power or authority. Hallelujah. And in fact, did you know that when what Jesus did on the cross was an action that when we read it, when we read about it today in the English language, we would describe that action as a past tense verb. Something that happened in the past. A past tense verb looks back to an event and it says, that happened. And why is that important? Why is that important? Well, because when this happened in the Hebrew language, it was described as a verb, but in the perfect tense. In the perfect tense. That's significant because in the perfect tense, it speaks of an action that has been completed in the past, but with results that are still in effect in the present and also continuing into the future. Amen. Past, present, and future. Amen. The perfect tense adds the idea This happened and is still happening today and will always be happening. You see, it was the blood of Jesus that paid the price for all sin, past, present, and future. The perfect tense is great because we don't have to wait for forgiveness. Amen? This is the part I like. Hold on. I feel like sometimes a TV commercial because I love to say this. 
but wait, there's more. You know, it seems like no matter how much I read God's word, it always gets this point where it seems like there's this pinnacle and I go, wow, God, that's deep. And then all of a sudden he goes, wait, there's more. (laughs) Right? Every believer is covered by the blood of Jesus, which paid the price for sin, right? The blood of Jesus paid the price for sin, past, present, and future. But it was the power of God's spirit that raised Jesus from the grave. Amen? Amen. Right? It's the blood and it's the spirit. The same power that raised Christ from the grave is the same power that was given to us on Pentecost Sunday. You guys starting to understand why I like Pentecost Sunday? I love Pentecost Sunday. And it's still available to us today. But you know what? It's not just for today. It's available to us tomorrow too. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Isn't that awesome? The atoning blood and Holy Spirit power, which is where we get the verse in Revelation 12, 11, that says they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. It was funny when I was, when I was preparing for this message and, and God gave me this verse. I only remember the first part, right? I only remember that part that says, they triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. But this next part is kind of obscure. And they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Which means this. You ready? I know you're back there ready. (laughs) She's like, no. (laughs) It means that Satan is disarmed when we accept Jesus and what he did on the cross and our sins are forgiven. Amen? But he is defeated when the power of the Holy Spirit transforms our lives and we become a living testimony of what God has done in our lives. Amen? Well, come on. I don't know if you're like me. Pastor Jimmy brought it up here before. Like, I tell you, God forgave me of a lot of stuff. You guys would be surprised. <laughs> if he could do it for me, man, he could do it for anyone because I was the worst, Right? But that last part of verse 11 is so important. It says that they they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. I feel like I got through this really quick. I started trying to figure out what that means. You know, like what? It's like one of those verses that, that you read, you know, Like it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Like, like God, you got to put that in the message translation for me because I don't really understand it. But faith is the substance of things that we hope for, right? Which basically means that what do you have faith for this morning? Do you have faith for one thing or do you have faith for multiple things? Because your faith is the substance of what we hope for. And I have a lot of hope. Amen. And it's the evidence of things not seen because I don't know how it happens. But in my faith, Pastor Chelsea, you knocked it out of the park when you said that this morning. You have to walk in that. It's like God doesn't give you what you need until you put your feet where they need to be. Right? Right? But I began to think about this, and they did not love their lives as so much as to shrink from death. You see, the last thing is the final thing that I want to talk about the importance of time and season that we're in today. See, we're not in that season 
just for the church. We're in the season that we're in for the world. I believe when Jesus came into the temple, do you remember? He came into the temple and he saw the money changers and he saw all the people and he overturned the tables, right? And he says, this is my father's house and it will be a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. And the first thing I thought about was, you know, it was the money changers and the people that were doing things that weren't proper, that they were receiving money that they shouldn't have and they were being like a thief. But I believe Holy Spirit revealed this to me, that that's not what Jesus was talking about at all. What Jesus was talking about is that he's called the church to be an example to the rest of the world. And if we act like the rest of the world, then why would they want what we have? Because they already have it. Right? What he's saying here is that you have stole salvation from the people. Whoa. The season that we are in right now as the church is for the world. Most people will go great lengths to avoid feeling awkward or uncomfortable or experience difficulty. But believers have an added challenge here. The enemy does not want anyone to speak the truth about Jesus and what he did on the cross, right? Because what Jesus did on the cross gives us the ability to be forgiven from sin and the enemy does not want that, right? And at first, speaking about Jesus or this is the other thing. Have you ever heard it saying, a saying in the church, I plead the blood of Jesus, yeah. right? At first speaking about Jesus or even pleading the blood of Jesus over a situation or a person or praying with people to see God move mightily might feel uncomfortable. It might feel unnatural and it might feel awkward. And since the enemy doesn't like believers to be witnesses, he will cause them to feel uncomfortable and awkward so that they will not be the witness that they are called to be. Let me rephrase that. Sometimes when we feel awkward or uncomfortable in witnessing for the word of God, the enemy tries to use that to keep us from walking in the totality of who he's called us to be. And church, we, we cannot love our comfort so much that we do not do what we know we should do because it feels uncomfortable or unnatural or awkward. I don't know how many times most of you know me and you know how uncomfortable or awkward it might have been when I approached the first time going, Woo-hoo! <laughs> but don't let that awkwardness stop you from being the mouthpiece that God wants to use to bring life into a lost and a dying world. Amen. On, and here it is. The truth of the matter is it's not us to begin with. It's not you that's going to do anything. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that enables and empowers us to be witnesses in the first place. Well, okay, now I'm going to put that on the back burner for a second, right? And talk about this. If you're not witnessing and you're not empowered to be a witness, do you really have the Holy Spirit? Because it's the Holy Spirit that empowers you to be a witness. Remember in verse 8, Jesus said this. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. 
And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And what we really, really need to remember is that all scripture is the inspired word of God, right? I didn't just say that, God did. And look at verse four. It says this. On one occasion, while he, Jesus, was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my father, for the gift my father promised, which is the Holy Spirit. So the word of God, or I'm going to say it this way, Jesus himself tells us to wait for the Holy Spirit. That means before you do anything, ask Holy Spirit for the ability to do what you know you can't do on your own anyway. Right? And then if you fail, it's not you, it's him. And we just found out that he's not going to fail, is he? Amen? He won't fail. And then, and only then, you will begin to see God move like you've never seen him move before. Amen. Not only that, but that's when the people who don't know Jesus will have their eyes opened and Jesus will reveal himself to them in a supernatural way. Right? How do I know this? Because that's also in the word of God. And it's in the very season that we're in today. According to verse three, which says, After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave them many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Now, I don't know about you, but I wonder if you caught that. He said this, he revealed himself to them. He gave convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days. Wow. Doesn't that take the pressure off? Like it does for me because I'm awkward and and it could be uncomfortable, right? And God just says, go do it like you would if you were in Malin. Right? Each and every one of us have a distinct and unusual personality. And I hope we're all peculiar people, right? And God uses us according to the way that he has planned for. And sometimes, you know, I thought to myself, man, I really wanted to go out to Paisley this year, this, this day. And God said, they weren't ready to hear what you got for them. <laughs> or maybe they needed to hear what Thomas had for them. What Tom, Pastor Tom had. Right? It was Jesus And it is Jesus who does all the work. Today, we are just his vessels. Just the broken pot of clay that he uses. Friends, that's the time and the season that we're in today. Today, we are in the 40 days after his resurrection. And just before Pentecost Sunday, where he is revealing himself to people. And he is revealing himself to people with many convincing proofs that he is alive. Amen? Before I close, I have this picture that I want to share. I hope they got it. I don't know if I can see it. Yeah, there it is. You guys see that picture? Two girls, three girls, the little having coffee, good time. Squint your eyes. What do you see? Have you seen those before? They're popping up all over the place, right? And what I see and what I heard Holy Spirit talk about is that sometimes as Christians in the church, 
receiving the glory like we did with the worship today and the prayer and all of that stuff. And we see God in everything and everywhere we go. Sometimes we forget how difficult it is for non-believers to see Jesus on their own. Think about it. Think about it. We sing songs like, I'll put my trust in you. And the people in the world watch Fox News. They see what's going on in Israel and with Hamas and Iran. They hear about wars and rumors of war. They see that what was hidden behind the shadows is now right out in front in your face. And this picture actually gives us an example about how sometimes it's even hard for us to see Jesus. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, If you are here and you've never invited Jesus into your heart, and today you want to experience the freedom of not having to carry around your burdens and the weight of sin, I want you to know Jesus is inviting you today. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light maybe you're here today and you found yourself feeling like you're in between your promise and your muck Maybe, maybe you're here today and you feel like you've been in a season of confusion. A season where nothing seems to be going right. Maybe you're in a season no matter how hard you've been trying Everything seems to be falling apart. Maybe you're here today and you would say to yourself, Lord, I, I need a fresh revelation from you. Lord, I need proof. here to tell you that today is the day. You know, some of us have been waiting for this or that, or I'll take care of it Monday. Church, we can't afford to wait anymore. Maybe you're here today and you, you need to be filled with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. If that's you, I'm gonna ask you to do something bold. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to stand up right where you are and just make your ways to the altar.
And if you need the presence of our Savior, don't worry about what people will think. Maybe you're here today and and you feel okay. You feel like everything's going well. But there's some people that have been on your heart. Some things that you've been praying for. Things that you've been contending for. I'm going to invite you to to come up to the front. No matter what it is. Church, I believe that we are in a time and a season that Jesus desperately wants to reveal himself to us in a greater way. And maybe that's you. Maybe maybe in this new year, 2024, you would say, I want more. If you're here today and you want to experience more of what God has for you, I want you to make your way down to the front. We're going to have a time of prayer. Because I believe, I believe that Jesus is ready and willing to perform many convincing proofs that he is alive. And friends, if we're not excited that Jesus is alive, why would the world believe it? church, it's up to us to recognize the seasons that we are in. Friends, we are in a season that brings and bears fruit. We are in a season that bears witness to a God that is not willing that any should perish. Let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful that you love the world so much that you sent your one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But we as the church, Lord, we know that you're not coming back for the world. You're coming back for the church. And Father, it's our job not to be conformed to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may prove what is good and acceptable and what is your perfect will. And as your children... We live in a very peculiar time in history. The wickedness and the evil no longer hides in the shadows or behind corners. In fact, it is blatant and out in the open and even in our face. But we know according to your word, that you are amongst your people. And in our praises, you receive glory. Father, we ask today that you would help us to walk in the glory of your son, Jesus. We ask that you help us walk in the presence and in the power of your Holy Spirit. That you would allow us to 
to let your light shine through us and to overcome the darkness. And that God, you would bring salvation not to just the church and not to just some people, but to all people everywhere, God. Father, today, we give you right of way. Today, we love you. We accept you. We ask for your forgiveness in the areas in which we've lacked. We recognize the day that we live in is a day that might have began 2,000 years ago but it's still very present today. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, God, and empower us to be your witnesses wherever we are, whether we're at work or at school or at the theater or at the supermarket or even at the park, God, that we would be a people that would speak the name of Jesus. Bless us and empower us today by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Thank you for joining us. A special thank you to those of you that give generously to this ministry. It is because of you that this ministry is possible. You can click the link in the description to give now or visit refugecity.church for more information on how you can become a part of that team. If you've enjoyed the podcast, you can subscribe, you can share it with your friends, you can take a screenshot and share it on your social stories, and make sure to tag us at Refuge City Church. Thanks for listening.